this is lecture number 23 of the course ME314 Fluid Mechanics 2 and uh, uh, this is the second lecture of this week uh, and we will talk about uh, turbo machine performance. Uh, we already have uh, derived Euler equation of turbo machine and uh, uh, we have uh, seen the effect of the blade angle in a special case where we, the pre weld component was zero. So today we are going to study this uh, centrifugal, uh, pro we will do the problem uh, we have uh, related with centrifugal uh, blower and then we will go into the definitions and the systems for pumping system like uh, uh, the, the heads required like a static head, friction head and the system head. And then we will talk about uh, the uh, in the pump uh, the types of losses that are present mechanical, hydraulic, and uh, uh, friction losses. And then we will work out different efficiencies uh, associated with pump. And then we will look into the uh, term, uh, pump performance characteristic curves, which are uh, uh, usually supplied by the uh, pump manufacturers. So if you look at this problem, the problem is uh, uh, having a centrifugal impeller whose uh, inside radius is 3 feet and outside radius is uh, 4 feet. So your R1 is 3 feet and R2 is 4 feet. Uh, width of the blade is 3.5 feet uh, and uh, the impeller rotates at 36 revolutions per minute and uh, the uh, the volume flow rate when it enters is 80,000 cubic feet per minute of air is uh, coming into the eye of an impeller and once it enters it enters uh, parallel to the axis of rotation that is the eye of an impeller and then moves in the radial direction uh, the air uh, the air coming out of the impeller is uh, at 30 degree relative to the periphery. So this is a periphery and the angle which makes with the periphery is 30 degree as seen from the ground. So it is the velocity of the fluid leaving the relative to the ground. Not So that would be the V2 velocity that is given here. Uh, if the, obviously the density of the air uh, at the inlet is mentioned and the density at the outlet and outer periphery is mentioned. So we have to work out the velocities which is leaving the impeller that is V2 which is not known. We need to work out the torque and the power required to run this blower and then the uh, blade angle of that impeller like uh, beta 1 and uh, beta 2. So uh, first of all what is given here uh, we have been given the geometric factors like the inner radius of an impeller, outer radius of an impeller, the width of an impeller, RPM of an impeller, the volume flow rate and the density. So these are given in the problem uh, and since the velocity at the inlet is in the radial direction that is uh, uh, making an assumption. So here. Uh, the assumption of the tangential component of the velocity at the inlet or and there is no pre weld component so v theta 1 is 0 so the velocity which enters the fluid is same as the uh, 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 velocity in the radial direction so uh, uh, the tangential component is uh, 0 so uh, the fluid enters in the manner where uh, alpha 1 is taken to be 90 degrees. So, uh, second thing that is we can work out is drawing a particular velocity triangle. So, what information is given is V2 is not known, but the angle which makes it the tangent is known that is 30 degree. Uh, so, we have this 30 degree angle. If this angle is 30 degree, and then obviously the op op opposite angles, uh, vertically opposite angles, would also be the same. So this would be 30 degree. Uh, what we can easily work out uh, these uh, 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 blade velocities because uh, radius is given, angular speed is given, r omega, we can easily work out the velocity component. So first uh, what we do is since the fluid enters uh, 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 volume flow rate in is same as volume flow rate out. 
so volume flow rate is uh, area times uh, the, the not the volume flow rate but the mass flow rate because mass flow rate is uh, rho a1 v1 area 1 v1 would be the volume flow rate so here the mass flow rate because the density at inlet and outlet is varying so if your density is same then uh, r1 and r2 cancels out but if density is different then we have to see the mass balance whatever mass is coming in the same uh, rate at which the mass should leave so mass flow rate would be density times the volume flow rate so density is given volume flow rate at inlet is given uh, density at outlet is given uh, uh, the geometric values of area at outlet is given so vr2 would be the relative velocity component uh, 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 that is at the outlet uh, that is something we can work out and since uh, v r2 and v2 are related by the angle theta so if this is 30 degree this would be also 30 degree so sine of theta would be perpendicular over hypotenuse so perpendicular would be v r2 and hypotenuse would be v2 so v r uh, uh, sine theta would be v r 2 over uh, v 2 so v r 2 would be equal to v 2 times sine of 30 so v r 2 here i have substituted v r 2 is v 2 times sine of 30 because if this angle is 30 then this angle will be 30 uh, and the uh, side opposite would be perpendicular and this would be hypotenuse so i can work out the magnitude of the velocity v2 uh, that come out to be by uh, uh, doing the mass balance at the inlet so we have the magnitude of the velocity is uh, 28.5 feet per second obviously it makes an angle of 30 degree to the uh, tangential tangential direction at the outlet of the periphery so that is uh, this 30 degree angle is always uh, uh, it is given here so that is the magnitude of the velocity so if you have to write a velocity then you have to specify the magnitude as well as the direction okay now move to the second part uh, we have to work out the torque so as i know from euler's equation of turbo machine the torque is rho q times r2 times tangential component of the velocity so if v theta 1 is 0 so the torque would be equal to r times q times uh, r2 v theta 2 so v theta 2 would be uh, as i already know uh, this is my uh, v2 is in the previous diagram v2 was uh, uh, this thing so v2 this this uh, v theta 2 would be cos of that because if it is 30 then this direction would be perpendicular and then this would be base so cos of 30 would be base over hypotenuse so v theta 2 uh, over v2 would be cos of 30 so v theta 2 would be v2 times cos of 30 that is what we can substitute here so v theta 2 would be v2 times cos of 30 uh, uh, the vol vol volume flow rate is given but 80,000 cubic feet per minute so uh, that is uh, converted into divided by 62 put it into seconds and uh, since uh, this requires some conversion because uh, the density here is given uh, uh, because we are interested in torque torque is pound force into fit just like newton into meters so instead of newtons you have a pound force since the density is given in terms of a slug so one slug is 32.174 pound mass then this one uh, pound force would be one pound mass times the acceleration due to gravity that would be 32.174 feet per second squared so one pound force would be 32.174 pound mass uh, uh, times feet per second squared so in this way i will be able to get the torque in pound force times feet so because uh, velocity is in feet per second uh, since it was in fit per meter cube, uh, meter cube, uh, cubic feet per minute since it is fit per second so i have converted it into fit per second by dividing by 60 and r2 is the radius at the outlet so rho is the density in pound mass uh, that is given in um, uh, the density is uh, pound mass per cubic feet 
so uh, that uh, factor converted that uh, pound mass into pound force so eventually the torque uh, uh, that is required at the shaft of this uh, impeller would be 327 pound force uh, fit once we know the torque then the power can be easily worked out so the formula for power would be t times omega but keep in mind here we have uh, uh, the power i am uh, because it's a pound force and foot system of units so here we have a conversion factor of 550 so basically one horsepower is uh, 550 pounds force feet per second and we know one horsepower is 746 watts so uh, uh, omega is 2 pi n over 60 because n is the revolutions per minute so divide by 60 uh, i am going to get the power in terms of horsepower so if uh, si system of unit then power is t times omega only because the uh, torque in that case would be in newton meter so here it is in pounds force feet so that's why you have this uh, conversion of power uh, into pound force per because the torque is in pound force per feet and i am interested in power in horsepower so i have that conversion factor for the horsepower okay the next is to work out the blade angle so first i work out the velocity blade velocity at inlet which is uh, r1 times omega and uh, blade velocity at uh, outlet which is uh, since r2 omega is same so r2 is a bigger number so I have a bigger velocity at uh, blade velocity at the outlet compared with inlet. Uh, since I know the volume flow rate is at inlet would be area times velocity at 1. So velocity since V theta 1 is 0 so V1 is same as Vr1 and uh, uh, we can easily work out the relationship between Vu and W. So V1 is uh, known from this equation and from the geometry we can see the tangent of beta would be perpendicular over base so i know v1 i know u1 i can easily work out the uh, blade angle at the inlet so that comes out to be 60.8 degrees uh, if you draw the velocity triangle at the outlet so we know uh, the v2 is 30 from the tangent and u2 is 15.1 feet per second so that would be the uh, relative velocity since i know that this angle is uh, theta this angle is beta 2 so if this angle is beta 2 then this angle would be 180 minus beta 2 so if i know uh, this length i know this length and the included angle i can easily work out the magnitude of the other side so by using the cosine law i have worked out the w2 velocity component so which comes out to be 17.17 feet uh, per second so that it makes sense that this is 28.5 this is 15.1 then this should be somewhat between less than 28.5 and somewhat greater than uh, u2 uh, the angle i can easily work out using the sine law so i have uh, in this law, triangle i have applied the sine law so sine of as i know this magnitude 28.5 divided by sine of 180 minus beta 2 or vice versa equal to sine of that angle divided by the magnitude of w2 so here uh, sine of uh, 180 minus beta 2 i have two possibilities either beta 2 be um, if you solve this trigonometric equation you have uh, uh, two possibilities because sine is a positive uh, number in first and second quadrant so if theta is 56 or 124 since from the geometry we have learned that uh, 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 if 124 then it would be a forward blade angle and uh, if it is beta 2 is 56 degrees so from the geometry uh, if it is uh, 128 then w2 would be much much a smaller value since w2 is 17.17 feet it means uh, beta 2 here is 56 degrees so that is actually the uh, for the uh, backward curve blades uh, less than 90 degree at the outlet okay so this is how we have solved the problem okay uh, now look uh, into the typical uh, water pumping system so in water pumping system uh, you have an underground tank 
and you have an overhead tank and this is a device we have called pump so we suck water from the underground tank and uh, supply water to an overhead tank so typically this is your underground tank this would be your overhead tank this would be your pump and uh, obviously there is some piping associated and uh, there are uh, uh, the question is what would be the performance uh, parameter of the pump so what you need is you need certain head to develop and obviously at uh, what cost uh, uh, at what rate you are supplying water sucking water from the underground tank and uh, supplying it to the overhead tank so essentially you have one parameter would be the head and head here is the difference between the water levels of the two tank so that would be the head uh, which pump this pump is uh, required to provide that head so that water can uh, move from this water level to this water level uh, second performance parameter is the flow rate at what rate uh, how fast we are providing water to the overhead tank so that would be the flow rate so these are the two important parameters and uh, from a simple uh, effect on the blade study we see that head is in the vertical axis the flow rate is on the uh, horizontal axis and we have seen as the flow rate increases uh, for backward curve blade your head uh, should decrease ideally so that is uh, somewhat happens in the uh, 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 because your piping system requires this piping and some friction is associated in that piping system which supplies water from underground to overhead tank uh, but as far as this uh, this head is concerned from the two water levels we call that head to be as static head because static head in a sense that irrespective of the volume flow rate this head remains the same because these levels uh, water levels are based on the height so they are uh, uh, not depending upon the flow rate so the static head is independent of the flow rate it remains same so because whatever the flow rate at the outlet the static head requirement remains the same so this is the vertical distance which uh, uh, to be lifted from the uh, lower level of the water level to the uh, overhead tank level uh, next head which is actually your uh, red I have shown here in the red line is actually the head loss uh, due to overcoming friction in the piping system so your piping system would be comprising of different types of sizes of the pipe different materials of the pipe different shape of the pipe how many turns it has and so on so here your friction head is uh, 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 proportional to the volume flow rate so more the volume flow rate more will be the friction head so this friction head is in this piping system and that friction head would be depending upon the magnitude of the flow rate so uh, you have two types of head static heads and friction head static head is independent of the volume flow rate whereas uh, um, uh, friction head is proportional to the volume flow rate so more the volume flow rate more would be the friction head so if you see here combining these two heads uh, friction head uh, static head plus friction head so we superimpose together then we end up a head that is called as system head so uh, that is actually the uh, system head requirement as the flow rate increases uh, this system head curve also increasing which is a combination of uh, static head plus the friction head so that sum would be called as uh, total head or system head because this uh, uh, pumping system is supposed to provide uh, you need to provide that head because uh, one is the head which is the static head the water level to be raised second some uh, head associated with the piping system so that would be called as friction head uh, if you look at a typical uh, uh, system, um, uh, um, you have the suction side, you have some measurement of uh, pressure, velocity and altitude and uh, there is some uh, discharge side of the pump. So uh, fluid comes to the inner periphery and uh, 
uh, it moves in the radial direction and then enters out from that uh, involute casing. So there is some pressure um, and velocity and altitude head. So using this Bernoulli equation, the head uh, which is actually um, uh, available would be equal to depending upon the conditions of pressure, velocity and altitude at section 1 and at section 2. So uh, uh, the head requirement at section 2 is bigger than the head requirement at section 1 and the difference is actually provided by your pump. So HA I call it to be the actual head raised by a fluid through a pump. So that would be my, um, okay, that's right, head raised by the pump. And uh, uh, if I substituted uh, that head, HA would be equal to the difference of the pressure head, difference of the velocity head, and the difference of the kinetic uh, poten potential head. This is kinetic potential head, kinetic head, and this is the pressure head. So actual head raised by the fluid through a pump is a combination of uh, uh, how much is the pressure at 1 and 2, how much are the differences of the velocities at 1 and 2 and how much is uh, the work you, your pump need to do in order to uh, change the elevation. Since uh, the difference between the elevation at, in, at the suction side and the discharge side is not that much, is a small number and similarly the magnitude of the velocities at inlet and outlet if you ignore. So the velocity changes and the altitude changes if you ignore then your uh, head would be uh, just the pressure difference uh, P2 minus P1 divided by rho g. So delta P would be H rho g. Uh, so this is what I call is my actual head that the uh, uh, fluid actually has raised uh, would be depending upon the uh, difference between the head which is being supplied and uh, the head which is uh, losses uh, in overcoming the losses. So uh, HS would be your supplied head and HL would be your head losses. So we can say that in terms of uh, power, I can say that the power supplied to the pump would be the pump input and uh, the head actually uh, developed uh, or raised by the fluid would be the uh, there is an associated uh, uh, power associated with to, uh, which is provided to the fluid and the difference is actually the uh, power loss so uh, the energy balance for the pump would be some power supplied as an input and uh, uh, that should be greater than the power actually gained by the fluid and the difference is actually the power losses. So this is a typical equation and as we know in pumping system uh, head uh, losses can be worked out uh, by this uh, darcy Wisbach equation and uh, in uh, uh, you know this uh, uh, chart from that you can work out the friction factor and the length of the pipe and the diameter of the pipe. So if your diameter is shorter, so you have more head loss or if your length of your pipe is much bigger, your head losses would be much higher. Similarly, if you want higher velocities, then your head loss requirement would be uh, higher. So uh, from that equation, if you have, uh, and obviously this friction factor requires knowledge of Reynolds number and the surface roughness of the pipe which is uh, if these two informations are given uh, you can work out uh, uh, because if you know 64 over Reynolds number is an expression for calculating the friction factor so uh, as the Reynolds number increases in the Levena range your friction factor uh, uh, is uh, decreasing and then you have a transition region and then you have uh, uh, different friction factors uh, depending upon the Reynolds number and depending upon the surface ratio. So um, uh, uh, such uh, uh, graphs you have already worked out in FM1 course. So uh, uh, that would be you can there, from there you can work out those uh, uh, losses associated because this is the pumping power or power you are into the supplying to the shaft of the pump 
and uh, some of the power is gained by the fluid and the rest is actually the losses. So uh, if you subtract those losses then this difference would give you the uh, power actually given to the fluid. So losses are of different types uh, as we have seen the ideal curve uh, H versus flow rate. So this is straight line is uh, ideal case in which uh, we have, uh, I mean I should go to this, okay. So this is, uh, uh, um, head losses, uh, uh, head associated with the flow rate. So as flow rate increases, head decreases for a backward curve shape blades. Now. So once the fluid enters, uh, actually uh, it experiences different cross sections. Uh, so let's say if the cross section area is increasing, so streamlines goes this way and then their recirculation takes place at these places. Or if the area is decreasing, so in this case streamlines goes like this and there are some uh, eddies formed at that place. So uh, some of the head loss whenever you have come across with different cross sections. Uh, so, uh, so this would be the ideal case, straight line case, but actual case it would be somewhat a little curve, so which includes the, uh, the losses associated with the area change as well as uh, overcoming friction in that uh, blade passage. Uh, secondly, once the fluid tries to enter, uh, uh, so there is uh, some uh, eddies formed, we call it a recirculation. So some of the energy is uh, uh, lost in um, uh, this, uh, uh, vert these vertices. So that is represented by uh, that area. So actually your ideal part is this, but because of the recirculation, your uh, this is your shut off head. So when your flow rate is zero, you are going to get this ideal shut off head. But actual shut off head is somewhat lower than that. And it is because of these uh, re losses due to those uh, recirculation in the uh, uh, passages. So that would be this area is representing recirculation losses. Uh, third type of loss is which is actually called as incidence loss. So obviously there is some uh, um, incidence angle through which uh, the fluid is coming to the blade passage and so this incidence losses are uh, actually distributed throughout the uh, uh, head and flow rate curve so uh, so uh, ideally you should have this thing but uh, it's actually decrease and this area is representing the incidence losses so if you all combine all these losses like uh, friction losses and area passage uh, area reduction or increase losses or recirculation losses or incidence losses combined together so your uh, ideal curve is a straight line but your actual curves looks like this so because of all these uh, uh, losses that are actually present in the pumping system uh, efficiency as we know the pump energy given to the pump uh, and uh, some part of the energy is uh, given to the fluid and the difference is the losses. So this is I call it uh, uh, because this pump is supposed to be uh, getting certain power gained by the fluid and uh, the some power is supplied by th through a motor. So that input power would be the shaft power that has been supplied to the uh, 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 impeller of this pump and PF is the pump which is uh, actually gained by the fluid and the difference is actually the difference between the, uh, the pump power supplied and the, uh, the power gained by the fluid would be actually called as pump losses. So uh, the magnitude of the power delivered to the fluid can be worked out because power is rho g h q. So here Q is the volume fluid of the fluid, H A is the head, actual head developed by the fluid and rho is the density, G is the acceleration due to gravity. So this is actually uh, and uh, uh, this is PF which is power given to the fluid and here P is the power input which is actually required to drive the pump. As we know it is actually the P in, uh, input power is actually the shaft power which is T times omega and omega is 2 pi n over 60. So the F overall efficiency of the pump would be the ratio of the power which is actually delivered to the fluid divided by the power that is being supplied. 
because uh, and the difference between these two powers would be your losses so uh, uh, what is efficiency is a desirable uh, output over the required input so your desirable output is uh, uh, the power which is given to the fluid which is rho g h q and this is the power which is being supplied so this ratio would be the uh, efficiency of the pumping system uh, of the pump which uh, is run by the motor and the angular speed uh, of the shaft is omega and q is the volume flow rate t is the torque so we can write down the equation for p is the power uh, supplied uh, through shaft to the pump and uh, the power which the fluid has gained equal to the power losses and we have uh, three different classes of losses we call it hydraulic losses volumetric losses and mechanical losses so uh, uh, we see one by one uh, we can write the same equation uh, for pump because this equation is good for the pump because here the p is the power which is being provided to the shaft and uh, that uh, is some bigger value and that part of the uh, power is uh, acquired by the fluid and the rest of the power is lost in uh, 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 mechanical losses volumetric and hydraulic losses and we will see these losses one by one so for example if we see the hydraulic losses so hydraulic losses means uh, uh, the friction losses in the blade passage these uh, eddies that due to the uh, incidence that forms uh, between the inlet and the blade entrance passages and uh, there are some rotational flow takes place and that rotational flow is contributing to circulation and uh, it is because of the imperfect match at the exit side of the blade so all these are bunched together into one loss we call it an hydraulic loss so this hydraulic loss is actually the ratio of the head actual head supply to the fluid and the uh, uh, gained by the fluid and the head supplied to the fluid and whatever the fluid uh, had gained that is actually the difference of the head supplied minus the head losses and these head losses you can calculate from those uh, darcy uh, wisbach equation so the formula for head loss is uh, 1 minus hl over hs uh, now we can work out the volumetric loss volumetric loss means you are providing some volume flow rate q but uh, some of the volume is leaked through ceilings and uh, uh, casings and uh, from all that so actually the volumetric efficiency is defined here volumetric loss efficiency is defined as uh, actual volume going through the pump divided by the volume which is being supplied to the impeller because uh, you are more fluid you are supplying to the impeller some is going leaving the impeller uh, through the pump and some of that QL is actually leakage or the loss of the fluid. And uh, if you see the mechanical losses, uh, because you have some moving parts, some contact points, some friction associated. So actually whatever the power you provided to the impeller, that would be the difference uh, of the power to the shaft minus uh, the power loss due to the mechanical friction and uh, this is the power given to the shaft or shaft power this ratio would be called as uh, uh, mechanical efficiency so overall efficiency would be actually the product of all three efficiencies and we can easily work out in the next slide uh, that overall efficiency is the product of hydraulic efficiency volume flow uh, volume electric efficiency and mechanical efficiency as i know hydraulic efficiency is head Able, which is given to the fluid divided by the head supplied and volumetric efficiency is the volume flow rate uh, which is going to the impeller divided by the total volume flow rate which the fluid gains uh, plus the uh, um, uh, flow rate lost so that would be the uh, mechanical efficiency we already have those formulas which are substituted back into that equation HA over HS, the hydraulic efficiency, volume, uh, volumetric efficiency, and mechanical efficiency. Uh, as I know that uh, this thing is uh, the power uh, uh, which is actually uh, supplied to the shaft, and this is the power which is overcoming uh, all sort of mechanical frictions. So uh, uh, power is rho G HQ. So here H would be the head supplied. 
and uh, the uh, volume flow rate would be the total volume flow rate so the total volume flow rate would be volume flow rate of the fluid plus the volume which is leaked so that would be uh, this difference is uh, actually this term and uh, as i know this q plus ql cancels out and hs and hs cancels out so i end up with the uh, uh the same expression read it in twice okay so finally i got this because uh, uh, rho g h q would be this numerator and uh, this uh, power supplied to the shaft would be in the denominator so that would be the same as uh, the uh, pump efficiency so we already know the pump efficiency is the power which is given to the fluid divided by the power given to the shaft so uh, that would be your overall efficiency so actually if you have those uh, uh, components like 0.9 efficiency 0.9 and 0.95 so you multiply together to get the overall efficiency of the pump or if you have the knowledge of these parameters you can work out the pump efficiency uh, if you see the performance curves as we see that uh, your head is a shut off head and flow rate increases for backward flow curve uh, it starts decreasing and your brake horsepower requirement increases and uh, uh, your efficiency increases and sub point it has a maximum efficiency and that efficiency where it is maximum actually it is called as the best efficiency point because uh, when efficiency is maximum so whatever the power requirement is and whatever the head available to the fluid that would be your best efficiency point so and q star would be the uh, 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 the flow rate on that best efficiency point as you see once you further increase your flow rate so your power requirement increases and your head decreases so uh, and once you increase further your head very sharply decreases so you don't want to your pump uh, you don't want your discharge valve to be open so that should not have that flow rate but uh, uh, you must uh, have both things because you need to supply head as well because after that point head decreases uh, q increases but head decreases very sharply so uh, you need to operate uh, at something uh, lower than that flow rate so that uh, you don't have that drop of the head so uh, as we know this sort of uh, performance curves can be developed by the supplier and uh, once they have made an impeller they made a geometry and they perform experiments and then they measure those performance parameters at different values of the flow rate so uh, the suppliers are responsible to develop such curves so typically uh, what actually uh, as a user pump user what you need to do is uh, uh, let's say your performance uh, curve for head is this and uh, what i do is because i know the uh, static head and the friction head together so i have that system head let's say my system uh, curve is this uh, and a is some operating point where the efficiency is maximum so somewhat higher so what i do is instead of that flow rate and that head if i decrease my flow rate and increase the head so my efficiency also has a drop so it means uh, uh, due to certain features in your system your friction curve uh, is such that your static head remains the same but your friction head changes uh, because of some uh, extra friction then your uh, operating point shifts from a to b so in this way your head is slightly higher but your flow rate is much lower and your efficiency is much lower so uh, 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 this usually happens once the uh, uh, pumps are not working at a steady state condition so uh, because static head requirement is usually depending on the height which remains the same so something happens in the uh, uh, flow uh, system flow channels where the friction head is changing and that is uh, responsible for your operating condition of the pump changes and once operating condition changes its flow rate head requirement head available and uh, its corresponding efficiency changes and so uh, that is same i have explained it here as well so if your operating condition shift from a to b there is a reduction in the flow rate and reduction in the performance or efficiency 
so this sort of curves are usually developed uh, at uh, different uh, impeller sizes let's say 6 inch dia you have head requirement is like this more the dia head requirement increases 8 inch dia can give you that head this would be the volume flow rate in gallons per minute this would be the head and these curves are actually the uh, efficiency point so uh, as you are moving in this direction the efficiency is increasing so if you are going in this direction your efficiency is decreasing and the dashed lines are actually representing the power requirement so if you see for uh, 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 7 inch power requirement is with the same flow rate is higher compared with uh, uh, six feet, uh, uh, six, uh, six inches impeller. So these are the uh, six inch, seven inch, eight inch impeller dia. So, uh, uh, so typically you have certain system curve and you plot it on a performance characteristic curve and you see where the efficiency is higher, then you select that operating points. Uh, there is a term called net positive suction head uh, um, uh, which probably you have worked out in your fluid mechanics one course where uh, you have to see take care of the cavitation effect right? so uh, uh, that i am ignoring in this fm2 course so as i am assuming that uh, net positive suction head uh, uh, for different pumps you have already worked out so make sure that you don't have that uh, uh, cavitation in the pumps. Uh, this is another uh, performance curve uh, uh, which is uh, almost the uh, same as the earlier one but what you see is uh, the diameter or size of an impeller is fixed and the speed at which this impeller has to run is a constant and this would be the head in feet and head in kilopascals. Uh, and uh, this is the flow rate in gallons per minute and uh, uh, these are the different efficiency curves so uh, what is usually needed is uh, in such uh, performance curves what you need is you need to draw a system curve and then matches with uh, what efficiency you are going to get from your uh, pumping system so once you uh, because uh, the here uh, uh, the size of the pump from uh, 6.75 inches impeller to 8.25 and so on it is increasing so uh, and the dashed lines are representing the power requirements so uh, you must be able to use these curves to required unknown because uh, they are given in 12 units like gallons per minute and the uh, liters per second as well as the head in feet or head in kilopascals so both are given and here head is given in meters as well so 40 feet is something 10.12 12 meters something like that so they are given in two different units so depending upon your units uh, uh, and keep in mind this pump operating speed is constant so if you have another speed so the selection of the motor goes with the speed so if uh, your motor can supply this RPM then obviously you have to select that performance curve of the pump where uh, the motor the, the motor available you have and this uh, 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 units of power is in horsepower as well as in kilowatt. So both uh, uh, US customary system of units and SI units are given in performance curves. So this is uh, where we finish this uh, today's lecture.